Hey Brahmas, in this video, I will show you some of the mechanics that you might need to be aware about as you search some of our databases. Let's start in the library's website. We are going to demonstrate OneSearch, which is found in the middle of our homepage. I'm going to use a topic that I think is covered with the three keywords of mindful meditation and schools. So as an example, I'm going to click search and you don't really need to mess around with the attributes. I would just recommend to leave it at everything and simply identify some keywords to begin with, because inevitably you might encounter other keywords that you could use about your topic. So this is how one search will look once you click enter. In my case, it's looking for any record that has the three keywords that I entered. Now, before we start looking at all of the results, we want to go to the left-hand side in the navigation tools, because in order to only look at peer-reviewed articles, we do want to click on a few filters. The very first one is scholarly journals, because we want to make sure that our articles are peer-reviewed. And this filter, scholarly journals, will guarantee us that. But also, it does make it easy if you also select the filter articles on the resource types. So with those two squares selected, I'm going to click on the Apply Filters green button on the lower left-hand left -hand corner. So we're going to go from 6,000 results into a smaller number, I hope. <laughs> Now, remember that OneSearch is looking across most of our databases at the same time. So sometimes the results can be overwhelming, which is why you want to be very specific with your keywords. So now that I see that my two active filters are scholarly journals and articles, I can start looking at the results because most of these will say peer reviewed and available online. That means that you can easily open up these articles in one of our databases. So for example, this first one, I'm going to click on the title to look at the record of that article. Now the record is going to show me which database is hosting that journal and that article. So if I scroll down a bit, I can see view online and the availability is coming from the database called Wiley Online Library. So if I were to click on that database, one search is going to try to open it. But first, it's going to ask me for my student ID number and my month and date of birth as my passcode. For faculty or employees, it's a different configuration. But let's go back to OneSearch. And let me show you another trick that you can use if you are getting a ton of results. You can also use the publication date feature in which you can limit the years of publications from which the sources were published. So instead of 1900, I can limit it to the last 10 years since this is a science based topic. So we only really want the most recent research, right? So I will do 2010 to 2020 and click on refine. And my results are going to go down from 3300 to hopefully something more manageable. Now, at this point, there's still a lot of sources to look through. So your job is to go down the list of retrieved results and read the title and some of the metadata of these articles to see if they actually match your topic and your research question. And maybe you will encounter different keywords that you hadn't thought about before that then you can use in the search bar to be more strategic and specific on your searches. Now, I'm going to show you another thing from our database. I mean, about our databases. In our homepage, we have this button called Databases A through Z. And if you open that up, you will see all of our databases that OneSearch is looking across when you conduct a search in OneSearch. But sometimes it's useful to 
search individual databases by themselves. Now, since this is a psychology research assignment, you're probably inclined to click on all subjects and look for the databases that specialize in psychology literature or research. And here you can see Academic Search Complete and Psych Articles, as I recommended, and also Science Direct and the Wiley Online Library database. As an example, I'm going to open up Psych Articles because this is a database that's very useful, especially for empirical research. So I'm opening up that database. I entered my correct login information. And once again, my original keywords had something to do with mindful meditation and schools. So maybe my research question or the topic that I'm trying to explore is something related to is mindful meditation useful for students in schools? But maybe I can be more specific than that, right? Or maybe as I start looking at the actual research, I will be attracted to a more specific um, terminology. But in this case, let's keep the same keyword combination, mindful, meditation, schools. I mean, maybe we wanna add something like children or youth. Now, I don't know if you know this strategy, but if you use or as a Boolean operator in parenthetical, you're telling the database search for this condition, that of either children or youth. So the parentheses counts as one keyword and the database is going to pull up anything that has either the word children or youth. This is very useful because sometimes we don't know what the best keyword is for a specific concept. In this case, the research could use the word children or youth or adolescents or teenagers. But for now, I'm gonna stick to that and see what comes up. And I mainly wanted to show you an example of a searching technique. Now, psych articles, is powerful because, especially for your assignment, because on the left-hand side, you could scroll down, and once again, you see the peer-reviewed filter. So we could click on that little box to filter only for peer-reviewed journals. Um, but also, under methodology, this database allows you to select the type of methodology. So we could specifically click on empirical study. Now, most of the articles in psych articles are going to be coming from peer-reviewed journals already. And you don't necessarily have to click on that empirical study filter, but it does help because sometimes you might be getting a ton of results. So just for the sake of mechanics, Let's say that the first article is really interesting. Notice how underneath the title, you could see the publication title. In this case, it's Journal of Consulting and Clinical Psychology. That can give you an idea of the approach or the angle or the field from which the research in that article is approaching the topic. But once again, for the sake of mechanics, I'm opening up the record of that article. The article itself, it's on the left-hand side. You'll either see a PDF icon or a full text link. Now, the record can be useful though because you can see that there are a few authors. The source is the publication title. In this case, it's the journal titled of Consulting and Clinical Psychology. And if you scroll down a bit, you might see the abstract, which is summarizing the point of the article. Sometimes you might see more keywords or even subject headings. In this case, I can see subjects and things like cognitive behavioral therapy, school-based intervention, 
mindfulness, okay. High school students, what kind of students do I really want to learn about? So sometimes even just looking at the way the record of the article is described, you might learn more about your topic or other keywords that could help you. And right below the record also, I want to point out this thing called the Digital Object Identifier, DOI. And academic journals, in the citations, you are recommended to use the Digital Object Identifier, DOI, over the URL of that particular article. So for example, if I wanted to cite this article, I can go to the cite button on the right hand side. And it's going to show me various citation styles, but I'm going to scroll down to APA. And this is the citation in APA 7th edition that I could use. Now, I wouldn't say that it's 100% correct, but it's certainly at least 80 or 90% correct. And it's something that you can start using in your references page so that you can keep track of the sources that you're actually going to cite. Now, if we really wanted to read this article later, it would make sense for us to click on the email button and email ourselves this specific article. By default, some of the EBSCO databases have MLA as the default citation, but you can easily click it, switch it to APA, and you can use any email account that you might use. And in the subjects, you can even give yourself some notes, right? Like really good article, or maybe possibly interesting. <laughs> the point is you can easily email yourself articles with the citations, and that way you can already keep track of the sources that you think are going to help you with your assignment, and they will be in your inbox already with a PDF attachment, the link to come back to the database, and hopefully a pretty good citation. Now, let's, let me show you another feature of psych articles. If we go to the very top horizontal navigation bar and click on thesaurus of psychological index terms, Actually, you do not want to enter your keyword at the very top bar. You want to enter it in the second bar right underneath APA thesaurus. So that was my mistake. Let me try it again. Mindful. And I'm just going to say con term contains. Or maybe I really need it my term to begin with the keyword mindful, right? But in this case, it doesn't really matter. And maybe this, the option of term contains might be a little more inclusive. Now, I started with mindful, and then these are the other keywords that might be useful. Mindfulness, mindfulness-based interventions, and that's about it, right? I see some of the similar ones, right? So I'm not seeing something really unique. But I'm going to keep this subject heading because I feel like I want research that has this subject heading in its record. So I want to see all the research that is tagged with mindfulness-based interventions because I'm thinking maybe this is what I want in relation to schools and programs and children. So I'm going to add that. And I'm also going to add, so did you see on the top how it gave me that subject heading? But instead of mindful, again, repeating that, I'm going to just say schools. Because maybe my topic is rather simple. I want interventions that are mindfulness-based in schools. Right? Sometimes we don't have to complicate it. 
So now this database is looking for everything that has the keyword schools and the subject heading mindfulness-based interventions. So this is an example of how psych articles with its APA thesaurus could help you brainstorm or better identify the specific scientific keywords that psychology research uses for some of your concepts. But after this, it's still up to you to scroll down the list of results and look at the articles that might be specifically matching your research question.